So continuing on the French door series, I'm going to be working on the vertical and horizontal muttons, with pe which people will shorten to mutts, which I'll probably do in this video. It's a little bit easier to, to get out. So going forward, I'm going to be using epoxy, and that's because I learned something new reading this book, and that is that when type on 3 gets too hot, which can happen especially on darker stains in east and west facing doors because of the sun, obviously, um, the, the glue joints can fail. They can heat up and fail. I did not know that. I'd never heard that before. Even though this door is going to have coverage from the sun and is, is not going to be one of those situations, I didn't want to chance it. So even though I don't love epoxy, I did buy a kit for this. Now in the book, um, the guy uses West Systems Epoxy. They didn't have a small kit. Total Bolt did. And like I said, I don't use epoxy a lot in the shop. I didn't want to buy two gallons of it and it go bad before I can use it. So that's why I went with Total Boat. And basically all I'm doing is I didn't have enough long material for one of my vertical muttons. So I glued up some material. I used a pretty substantial lap, as you saw, to glue that up. And once this is done, you can't even see this joint. Um, denatured alcohol is a really good tip to clean up any squeeze out from that epoxy. I let this set up overnight and, and like I said this is going to be for that one door. The nice thing about epoxy unlike other sorts of glues is because it cures it doesn't dry. If you mix it up wrong you'll know it because it will never set. It won't set in a matter of days. It, it just won't. It's a chemical reaction that makes it cure. So I came in the next day I could see that the leftover excess I had was cured and I can take all of my clamps off. So this is that piece I, I am left with. Obviously I will clean that up a little bit more and that will be one of my vertical uh, mutts. Now this video got kind of long so I'm focusing mo mostly on the horizontals. I'll deal with those in the next video. So to start this I need to start profiling my door. Like I mentioned in one of the beginning videos, um, I can make doors in a shop like this. The process is just going to be a little bit different and it's going to be a little bit longer because I do not have industrial grade tools which is what makes this process a little bit easier. But basically the back side of this I'm going to be using a rabbit. I have a bit for it but it's going to be a little bit faster cutting it on the table saw so that is what I'm going to do. So when I say backside, um, that's actually kind of uh, not act, totally accurate. The side with the rabbit is going to be facing into the house. The side I'm putting the profile edge is going to be facing outside. So once again, I'm going to start with my test cut piece because the face, the part of the door that's facing outside is going to get this profile. All of my mutts will get the same profile. Now on these pieces, this is really easy to do because I could just pop them apart and add that profile. On my long pieces, I marked all of those with tape because I'm not going edge to edge. If I send it all the way through, obviously you'll have a profile where your mortise meets your tenons, which won't work. So once these doors are totally glued together, I could put these bits in a handheld uh, router and clean up the corners. So that is another process that's a little bit longer in the shop. Once again, it is doable. You could see I'm starting above that tape mark. And then when I get to the end, I can move the, the piece off of the router so I don't go all the way to the edge. That is basically what I'm, what I'm talking about. You'll have to square up the corners, but it is a very doable process in a, in a smaller scale shop. So once I put that profile on all of my pieces, once again, I'm going to remove this rabbit. Basically, this is going to create a big void, and that is where the glass is going to go. And then um, much later in this series, I'll be making profile moldings. Those profile moldings will go on top of the glass, and that's what holds everything in place. And that part faces inside the home. So on um, my test piece, very easy. I already have that large half inch kerf, so one cut will remove that material. On um, my pieces with the tenons, I could send them straight through, but once again on my door styles, I'm going to have to um, cheat, cheat them onto the blade. 
lower them onto the blade and then lift them up so that I don't go all the way to the edge. So all I did was I put some tape on my fence so I can know where to lower it and then once the tape reaches the back end of the tape, which I, I numbered, I know I should lift it at that point. So pretty simple stuff. This might look like a dangerous cut to some people, but as long as you go slowly, it is pretty simple. So I could lower onto the blade when the one piece of tape hits and then lift it off when the other one hits. Um, I usually wait for the blade to stop spinning. It makes it a little bit safer. And then I could just come with an oscillating tool and, and roughly remove this piece. Like I said in the later series, you'll see I'll use a router to clean up these corners. But for um, the next little bit of material, you will notice that, that those profiles don't go all the way to the edge. So once again, can lower it, slide it through the table saw, lift when I get to the back edge, and that is how I, I made those backside rabbits. Remove that extra piece, and then that is the void. So then starts the, the mutts, and I'm gonna start by coping the ends first. I um, made a fence and I, I updated my router table. This is the project I did it for. These cuts have to be super accurate or they won't work. The problem with the kit I had is this ball bearing will not give me enough depth on the cope. I tried to find one that matched the profile that had no ball bearing on the top and I couldn't. So the way I solved that problem was I just cut that ball bearing off. Like I said, the last time I made panel doors like this was five or six years ago. That video is on YouTube. So I just don't make these often enough. Um, I wasn't super worried about taking that bearing off. So in order to figure out the math for this, you, you basically have three measurements because these are gonna be mortised into the rails and styles. Then they have the cope has to fit the top side of this um, profile. And then it also has to fit the rabbit as well. So there's three measurements and getting those accurate is really important. So I went through and I measured all of my depths. I came up with uh, where the molding is, where the rabbit is, and then I added um, the distance onto that for the mortises. I think I did one and a half or two inches. I can't quite remember. So I'm gonna rough cut all of my pieces to 18 inches and then I could go through and add the rabbit and the mortise. You could see I'm showing the marks of how deep the mortise will go. Like I said, I think it was about an inch and a half. So I, in the last video you saw I milled up all of this stuff, so I'm going to cut it down to size. Now the nice thing about this is, as you will see, this is a process. I had to set up a lot of tools in order to get all these profiles. So all of those pieces that I'm cutting off are going to be test pieces, and I used most of them in this process. You can see I, I, I set up all of my tools to cope that one edge. I got it so it was just about perfect. The rabbit worked out nicely, but when I went to go lay it on the piece, the 18 inches I cut was a little bit too um, long. You could see all the different math, how the, the cope side, the rabbit side, and the mortise are all different lengths. There's my pile of rejects, and then I finally got it perfect. So this is my test piece. Once again, like I said, you're gonna be using this throughout the whole process. I got it so that it fits perfectly in there. This mortise will be cut down later once I profile the mutts, but for the purposes of setting this up, that's what it looks like. So I basically had my radial arm saw set up for one cut, my table saw set up for another cut, and then the router table set up for a third cut. Someone who makes doors for a living has setups like these already set to go. And if they have to change their profile, they could probably set it up really quickly. I'm not gonna lie, getting all this stuff dialed in took me a couple hours. You could see my original 18 inches, it was just gonna be too long, which is why I do these test pieces. Um, I was lucky in the sense that mine was too long, I could cut it down. But in order to get the perfect size, what I did was I cut that profile on two sides and then you can see I put one next to the other and then I can mark on the edge where I, my distances need to be. My math was off by about a quarter of an inch, which is quite a lot, um, but I did the same thing on the rabbit side. I slid these two into place and where the mortise hit the tail end of my piece, it lined up perfectly. So I was pretty certain that all this was off by about a quarter inch. I cut down all of those pieces. All of this setup stayed the same, that was perfect. It was just my pieces were too long. 
So you can see on the radial arm saw, I was cutting the part for the rabbit. On the table saw, I'm going to remove the material that will start the cope. You can cut the whole cope on the router table. I just find it sometimes bogs down the bits. So I remove the bulk of the material and then you'll see how the cope will, will clean up that edge. So that is basically what that is. I have this right angle sled for the router table, which makes this a much safer cut. I made this when I made, um, made these profiles originally and I still have it. And I have all of this set up. The, the fence is set for the correct depth. Obviously the router bit is raised for the right height. And you could see I could just kind of lower it. I, and on the table saw, so I didn't actually go up to the right height. The, the, the bit is setting the height. And with three passes, I can create that coped edge. Like I said, all of this was a little bit of trial and error. You saw all of my scrap pieces. I, I was making little changes back and forth to get all of that set up accurate. But you can see when I now lay this in place, my two coped edges fit on top of that molding perfectly. And then if I flip it over, it fits inside the other doors rabbits perfectly as well. Because I haven't figured out the alignment of the mortises, that's what made this a little more difficult. I could have just made the mortises um, if I figured out my spacing first and, and got the measurement that way. But I wanted to make my profiles before doing the mortises. So that was kind of the purpose of all that math. And then I'm just going to go through this really quickly with a, with a new one. You can see I could cut both sides at the same time. You can cut the rabbit on the radial arm saw, remove the bulk of material for the cope on the table saw, and then clean up that joint on the router. It is a very quick process once you have it all set up, but the setting it up took a little bit of time. And that is what that looks like. So um, I believe I had eight of these in total because there's going to be four five five um, panels so four four of these will create five five holes so then i could start finishing these up as well um, i'm gonna have to remove the same rabbit on the top and i'm gonna have to put the same profile um, the rabbit on the bottom and the same profile on the top so once again i'm back to my test piece i basically have to set up my saw to remove that material so that everything lines up perfectly. So I created that original groove on these to make sure it lined up nicely. And then I could go through and remove the rest of the material. So this was my original cut with um, a dado stack in there. And I'm going to just send all of my pieces through. I have it set up perfectly that it goes right through the top side of that um, little tongue that's coming out and makes it so it, it lines up with the profile perfectly. Now the order of operations going forward, I'm sure some people will do it a little bit differently. Basically what I'm doing is I'm removing enough of the rabbit to still make it a safe cut on the table saw, but also make it so that it isn't safe cut to add the profile on the router table. If I profiled this first, I would have a curved edge, which would make this rock on the table saw. Um, if I cut all of the rabbit off, then it's a little bit of an unsafe cut on the router table. So this is once again, a little bit of a longer process. You could see at this point, I've cut that original center groove. I moved my fence over and I'm just taking away increments of that rabbit and then I'm left with almost a, an I-beam looking shape. So that little flange that I left is going to be the last thing I'm cutting off. I'm keeping it on there because when you see the setup on the router table, you'll see why I left that flange. And then there is the added profile. You could probably see at this point why I decided to do that second. If you do that first, then you don't have a lot of material on the table saw um, against the fence. So you could see now that little flange is what's being my reference mark on the table, the router table fence. And I could just slide these through and cut both of my profiles. This is a very easy cut because the ball bearing is still on this bit. So basically you just set the fence up in the proper, um, the proper depth. And because I have that test piece setting the height of the bit was pretty easy. I sent all my pieces through. 
Now this becomes a very dangerous cut, removing that last little bit of material. So what I did was I found this piece of oak that I had, which would work pretty well for this. It fits inside that groove. I'm gonna attach it to the tall fence I have for my router table. I used double-sided tape, but I reinforced it with screws. And you can see now that little flange will ride underneath that piece of oak, but my top profile rests on top of it. If you try and send this through on a fence, it's almost guaranteed without this added support that this will rock on you and kick back. So now when I'm removing that material and I only have that little quarter inch piece of material riding on the, the bed of the table saw, it's supported by that piece of oak so I can remove all that. So now I can do the mortises. I did a little bit of math. Like I said, all of my tenons are a quarter of an inch. I thought that looked kind of skinny, but that is the dimensions from directly from the book. They look fragile, but they're actually super solid. Um, so I'm removing an inch because I have four of them. So that will be an inch. That's just removing the thickness of that. I want five panels. So once I had my total vertical height, remove that inch, I got a number. I divided it by five because I want five panels and my spacing should be 14 and 11 16. So I roughly laid that out and then I, I made these scrap shims. So I'm gonna work my way up starting from the bottom of the door to the top. I'm gonna put my little spacers on both sides and I can mark them and work my way up the door so I can get perfect spacing for these. This is important because when you go to cut the glass, you don't wanna have a bunch of different sizes. I am outsourcing cutting the glass because there's gonna be a lot of panels for this and it would just be annoying if you have to give them multiple different sizes. It'll be annoying when it comes time to do the moldings. So I spent time making sure all that spacing was accurate. Um, I once again have another little shim. Before I started doing the mortises, I just went through and checked to make sure the spacing in between all of them was the same, and it was, and then I could cut these mortises. Now these are little quarter inch mortises. They're only going, like I said, about an inch and a half, so it was going to be a pretty quick process. I did these marks on one of these, and then I just transferred them to all of my other pieces. It made life a little bit easier that way. So that is what that looks like. Like I said, you can see I have marks on there. I transfer it to all the other ones. The thing about these doors are there's things in woodworking where you can kind of tweak dimensions and make things work. The accuracy of these is really important. There's really no wiggle room on, on these doors. So um, what you're not seeing in the, in the video is a lot of double checking, triple checking things before I go about doing them. So I bought a quarter inch um, spade bit, which was a very aggressive bit. That's not a criticism of the bit. I just don't think it was a design for this sort of application in order to drill out these mortises because this is how I did it with the mortises on the original ends. Um, and the problem with some of these bits are they, they want to dance around on you a little bit. So I started with these and it wasn't being super accurate with that spade bit. So I switched to a regular bit and I still wasn't loving the results. It was, it was moving around on me just too much. So luckily you could see how it, it kind of wants to get in that hole and then, and then it, 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 it moves off. So the, the quarter inch bit for the mortising machine was on sale and it was shipping in two days. So honestly, this is how I should have done these in the first place. Um, if you have a mortising machine, they're just gonna be much more accurate and much easier to produce results because this is what they're designed to do. And I already had the holes, but I cleaned them up with that bit. So that is what that looked like. You can do it on the drill press. I did all the original big mortises on the drill press, but it is gonna be a cleaner, simpler process if you have a, a bench top mortise or even a bigger mortiser than I have. And then I could test fit, fit these all together. So getting everything a little bit aligned at first was a little bit of a pain, but you could see once I had everything lined up, it went together really well. I was very happy with this. There was no major gaps or anything in these. And like I said, even though those mortises are a quarter inch, especially once you add the vertical in, these doors are really solid. So you could see the backside rabbits, what that looks like. Everything's lined up and matching. And then you could see these ones with the profile. There's no big gaps. The doors are still square. My corners look nice. 
and then the next video is going to be adding the verticals.